that pain and suffering has consumed you, now it's time to get to work. Now it's time to get to freaking work. Because there's, there's no development without the darkness. You cannot work on yourself. You cannot grow. You cannot develop without this darkness that we're talking about. And you need to know how to tap into that darkness and not crumble under the pressure and, and embrace that darkness. Because that's where the development happens. That's where the growth happens. And nothing happens until you enter the darkness. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And today I'm going to be talking about the top lessons learned throughout suffering and hardship and pure pain as I just completed a 24 hour weightlifting challenge, a fundraiser workout. So we're going to go over just and, and listen, these are just the top lessons that have just popped in out of my head in, in the, the first, really the first hours after the challenge, I started journaling about it. And I've had to add to this at least three or four times already because it just keeps popping in your head. It's like when we do the class of the project, we tell the men during the project, listen, you're going to have breakthroughs immediately right when you get home. Of course, you have breakthroughs on the spot, but there's going to be ones that sink in in the next day or two, but there's going to be breakthroughs and aha moments that are going to sink in a week from now, a month from now, a freaking year from now. So I'm sure as always, there's going to be more, and I have pages and pages and pages of notes already of, of journaling about this 24-hour challenge. This is where we're going to dive deep into at least these first initial lessons. So let's jump right into it. Here's the lessons I learned through suffering, through hardship, through pain and suffering and sacrifice during a 24-hour weightlifting challenge. It was basically 24 hours straight through seeing how many total pounds you can lift in 24 hours, just nonstop, no sleep, nonstop sets and reps, mixing up the exercises, all for charity. And my goal was a half a million pounds. So let's jump into it and see what were some of the lessons that I had. Let me, the first first lesson that I came up with that, that just hit me was that the work, whether it's the workout or actual work or whatever it is, the work has not started. The real work has not started until you're ready to stop, until you're ready to, that, until you've had enough, until you're ready to give up. You're ready to, I don't want to say quit, but until you've already thought, all right, I had enough. I'm ready for this to be over. The real work has not started until you get to that kind of breaking point. Then the real work starts because until then, it's just, it's just fucking practice. It's just a warm up until then because the real lessons haven't even come. You haven't even opened up the gateways for those op the opportunities for those lessons and value to come. Those, those values and opportunities haven't even arrived yet until you get to that point, to that breaking point, to that pain of that point of pain, that line in the sand where it's like, all right, beyond here is just going to be torture choose to either go home and quit like a little bitch or flip the switch, go through that magical portal and unleash the fucking beast that's within you as a man. That's this was this was huge to me. Realize that that the work doesn't start until you're ready to stop. It's it was to me it was like mind blowing just the thought of that. Because the breakthroughs have not begun yet. There's no challenge yet. The suffering, the adversity, and the challenge hasn't even started yet until you get to the suffering, the adversity, and the challenge, and the pain. It hasn't even started yet. So if, if it hasn't started yet, and the, the growth and the development is, in the, is, is, is a byproduct of the pain and suffering until you get to the point of just severe grinding it out, hardship, pain, suffering, there's no possible growth. There's no possible development. There's no possible self-mastery yet until you get to that line. There's no possible even win yet. There's no possible goal or victory or outcome that you're looking for. There's no possible fulfillment or satisfaction until you break past that point. Then it starts. Then it just begins. There's, there's nothing. There's fucking nothing until pain and suffering have completely consumed your soul and your existence and the entire being of who you are. Once that, that pain and suffering has consumed you, now it's time to get to work. Now it's time to get to freaking work because there's, there's no development without the fucking darkness. 
You cannot work on yourself. You cannot grow. You cannot develop without this fucking darkness that we're talking about. And you need to know how to tap into that darkness and not crumble under the fucking pressure and, and embrace that darkness because that's where the development happens. That's where the growth happens. And nothing happens until you enter the fucking darkness. That's some, to me, that's some deep shit. That's some fucking boom, aha, breakthrough moment shit right there. The next thing is the, the, the lesson, the breakthrough that I had is that once you kind of tell yourself, all right, you got to that point of pain and suffering. People have the, the saying, well, it's, this is just temporary. This will pass. That pain is just temporary. Now, that might work, but what if the pain lasts longer than the temporary you were willing to let it last? What if you could flip the switch in your mind and tell yourself pain is permanent? Pain is permanent, not temporary. Then you're able to deal with it no matter how long it lasts. Once you know it isn't going anywhere, it doesn't fucking matter. Nothing else matters. You're unstoppable. When, when other people crumble under the pressure of the pain and discomfort and suffering and hardship, you are at, at fucking home another day at the freaking office with a smile on your fucking face, smiling at the devil, running towards a gunfire while everyone else is running away from the gunfire. Think about that. There's, that, that creates a peace in the pain. Just like the development was in the darkness, there is a peace in the pain. Because you know who the only motherfuckers that don't feel pain are? Those are dead motherfuckers. That's the only people not feeling, that don't feel pain. So find that. Get that development in the darkness. Get that discipline in this darkness. And, and, and remind yourself and flip that switch. That pain is permanent. Once you can accept that fact, there becomes a superpower in that pain, a superpower in that suffering. That's the way you need to start thinking about this stuff. This makes you unbeatable. It makes you bulletproof. It makes you unfucking stoppable. When you can thrive under conditions that crumble and crush and devastate the average man, when you can operate to dominate under the conditions that crush the mere mortals, that's when you tell yourself that pain is permanent and, and it can't stop you. It can't even slow you down. That's when you can stand out and take the risks and just be bold and just realize it's just pain. It's just suffering. It's probably not going to fucking kill you. Probably. It might. But sometimes that's, that's the way it goes. You, might, you also might get in a car accident driving to the grocery store. This, this pain is permanent mentality is where you start living, where, where you're doing shit that people just think you're lying about. Or they can't even comprehend it because it's so unrealistic. It's so ridiculous and people can't comprehend it or, or it just means nothing to them. Like you tell them, oh, I lifted a half a million pounds. Like, oh, that's cool. They don't understand what that actually means. How many thousands of sets that is, how many tens of thousands of reps that is in such a short amount of time, how much brutal freaking torture and patience it takes to get to that point. Then one of the next lessons is to really understand to look and see and comprehend how far we could push ourselves as freaking humans like when you go and train hard at the gym for an hour a day two hours a day and you're done and you're like oh i'm beat but then you go and do a 24-hour workout you're like holy shit i just did this for 24 hours but i'm thinking that you i used to think an hour at the gym was hard like we train hard for an hour a day but we're capable of 24 hours straight this tells us like how far can we push us? What is this preparing for us? What are we actually capable of? Imagine a, an emergency or the end of the world or an earthquake or a hurricane or a snowstorm being able to operate and have to, if you have to do manual labor, just nonstop for hours and hours, let's say you had to fill up sandbags and create a barrier, a wall around your entire fortress during the invasion it's the end of the world. It's the apocalypse. Like knowing that you're ready and capable and physically, mentally, and emotionally have the endurance and the discipline and the patience to ride that out and stick with that until you accomplish the fucking mission, that allows you to, to, to take on much smaller tasks with ease, with a fucking smile on your face. Like imagine what we're capable of if we need to. After you, after we did this twenty-four hour challenge, it just showed me, like, as a, as our, what our family, and what what humans are actually freaking capable of, when, you know, what what we can 
get done under stress and pressure and during chaos if needed. And it's almost like, what are we capable of? It's, I, it's almost like unhuman humans because humans, humans were meant and, and, and are capable and are built for this kind of shit. But most people have opted out of being human. They become these fucking vegetables. They become these just robots, these fucking walking zombies. So when you do stuff like this, you're becoming an unhuman human. You're doing the shit that humans were meant to do. We were meant to to fucking work like this and to, to, to struggle like this and to suffer like this and to work through pain like this and to, and to find out who we are. Another, another lesson was to not just think of, all right, so I think of a half a million pounds, like holy shit. Tyson, who's, who's 12, his goal was 300 pounds. The Russian's goal was 200, 200,000 pounds. Sorry, 300,000 pounds and 200,000. Like you hear that and you're like, that's just impossible. There's no way that some skinny, ugly, old 45-year-old white dude is going to get a half a million pounds of lifting weights in 24 hours. It's just impossible. There's no way a 12-year-old kid who just turned 12 is going to get 300,000 pounds lifted with no sleep in a 24-hour period. It's just impossible. In this challenge, the, one of the breakthroughs and one of the lessons I got is that you can turn impossible, not just to fucking possible, but you could turn impossible to done, to complete it, to conquer, to dominate it, because it showed me how completely connected the body is, completely connected to the mind. Now, we already know that, but the body is just 100% completely connected to the mind, because once my mind knew, like there was about five, six hours left, maybe seven hours left, 24 hours, and it did the math, and I said, holy crap, I only need to do this amount of lifting in these next few hours to hit 500,000 because I was close and it was a guarantee. There was, it would take an earthquake to make me not get it. It was just the numbers were just too easy at that point. And once my mind knew that the goal was going to happen with the next few hours, the body started getting tired, started getting sore, started slowing down, started feeling just the creaks and aches and pains, not completely shut down yet, but now it started feeling it because it knew that it was possible. It knew the end was near. And then once the mind knew the goal had already been hit, and I hit 500,000 pounds, a half a million pounds with four hours left. So within less than 20 hours, hit the 500,000 pounds, half a million pounds. And once the mind knew the goal had already been hit, guess what? The body, not completely, but the body really started to shut down, meaning the total soreness kicked in, the destroyed freaking joints where you, you can't even bend over and pick up the weight anymore. Did, I didn't go to the bathroom the entire freaking time. I didn't take a crap the entire time until I hit the goal. Automatically went to the went to had to go to the bathroom. The body, the mind told the body, okay, we're done. We don't need to hold on to this anymore for emergency. Now it's time to go into the, the, the that the fight was over. The war is over. It's time to shut down to go into recovery mode. It's time to mitigate the damage and and go into the restoration and re, re, reparation sequence of this damage that's been done. And it started breaking down the last four hours after completing the 500,000 were actually the hardest part, physically, mentally, emotionally, getting the, the, getting mo the most tired during that time after not being a drop bit tired the entire first 20 hours of just nonstop hustling and grinding and lifting. And what it showed me, how, how did that happen? How did that happen? That wasn't even, you're not even feeling pain. You're not even feeling tiredness or soreness as you're in the battle, you're in the war because suffering and pain and hardship leads to that freak flow, that freak flow where you're just in the zone. This is just a new level of operating. And when a new level, even to the point of where it was done and over with, it just seemed like a blur. It seemed like it didn't even happen. It, it almost seemed like it happened at, at a different location, like somewhere else. Like this wasn't at our house. It wasn't here at the Freak Fortress. Like it was in a different realm. It was operating a different level of consciousness, like not even a part of this existence, like an alternate reality. It's fucking wild when you, when you go to this deep, dark place and push yourself way beyond the fucking impossible. And then the question I have is, and I'm going to be diving deep into myself in the next few weeks is, all right, that level, that is something different. That is next level consciousness. How do we optimize that? How do I weaponize that as an unhuman human? How do I optimize and weaponize that? And I'd have to dig deep into myself, and I don't even know the answer to that yet, but I know that that thing, that realm, that alternate reality, that freak flow state that we're in 
that feels like it's happening in a whole different dimension, that could be optimized and weaponized and turned into some magical, powerful shit that could be weaponized and optimized and even monetized. And that leads to the next lesson of, of don't get complacent after you hit a goal. After you hit a goal, it's just, all right, quickly recover, quick celebration, reflect, do an AAR, do some reflection, an after action review, what went well, what didn't go well, what would I do better next time, stretch, hydrate, fuel, whatever it is, then stay on task and plan the next step. From that point, where do I go from here? Not just letting the mind think that, all right, the war is completely done, shut it down because it wasn't done yet. It was only 20 hours in. It was a 24-hour challenge. Yes, the goal was 500,000 pounds. But the goal is also a 24-hour challenge. How many pounds can I get in 24 hours? And those last four hours, I think I only got like 8,000 pounds or six, I don't even know, not a lot. 10,000 pounds, so nothing, nothing, hardly any. And because listen, one goal is just a stepping stone to the next goal. The accomplishment of one thing, the end point is just the beginning point to the next goal. That's just the starting point. So don't get cocky. Uh, don't think of like that the the old thing you taught me your kid the turtle and the and the and the rabbit or the turtle and the hare or whatever the hell they call it where they have the race and the rabbit takes off it's so far ahead he stops he gets so cocky and complacent he takes a nap goes to sleep wakes up thinks he's still ahead finishes the race realizes the turtle already beat him the turtle smoking the turtle kept chugging along had a plan kept driving didn't stop didn't get complacent didn't get cocky so. When I hit the goal, was it getting complacent or was the mind shutting the buy down? Probably a combination of the two. You need to start focusing on after the goal. Like you can't start focusing on after the goal until you hit it, but you have to have an idea of what direction you're going to go in. How will you handle it if and freaking when you hit that damn goal? And then the other thing, the other reflection that I still have to kind of figure out, this is a question I'm asking myself that I just came up with, reflections that I still haven't even discovered that I'm working on, is if we're so tired and if we're so locked on and we're in this dark place and we have to check out, how do we extract the lessons and the memories and the thoughts and the brilliance and the breakthroughs if we're so locked into this dark place, if, if we're almost non-existent, we're checked out and we're checked into another freak mode, another dimension of darkness how do we extract those lessons? And, and we've had the same thing happen with, with guys in the project that during their 75 hours of the project, they, they're so deep in the trenches, in the suffering and embracing that pain, but then a lot of the lessons are missed because they're so deep in it. How do we extract that stuff? How do we keep it? How do we retain that? How do we extract those lessons and memories and thoughts and, and breakthroughs? That's still something I'm working on. And just like that other one, how to weaponize that other dimension. I'm working on this stuff. I'm going to put some deep time and effort and research and reflection into these things. But a huge part of what this, this suffering and this 24-hour challenge taught me is that we as humans and specifically as men, we are meant for this shit. We are built for this shit. We need to suffer and struggle and sacrifice. We need to find out what the fuck we are made of. We need to find out what we are capable of. We need to find out if we have what it takes. We need to find out and answer the question, will we crumble and make excuses and look for a way out when shit gets hard and painful and uncomfortable and impossible? We need the challenge, the violence. We need the darkness and the suffering, the fear and the pain. But us men, we need the competition. We need the impossible. We need the danger and the risk, the boldness, the opportunity. We need the fucking adventure in our life because we need to find out if we are real fucking men. We need to find out if we, if we, if we have what it takes as real men. And as we get older, guess what? It doesn't stop. We need to find out, do we still have what it takes to be a real man or do we lose it? Are we calling it in? Are we checking out of life? And then the next step of that is that, that I realized that we need to then demonstrate to each other, to other men, to our families, to our kids, to our sons, to our people, to ourselves, to the people that freaking matter. We need to demonstrate them that we are men, that we are capable men, that we have what the fuck it takes, that we can and should be followed, that we are built 
freaking differently. That we have the strength and the honor and the courage and the discipline and the commitment and the motherfucking balls. That we are bold and tough as leaders. That we are savage servants. That we are worthy. And as we get older, that we are still worthy and still have what it takes. That we are providers and protectors. That we are fucked up, but we are humans. And we need to demonstrate that we are motherfucking men. That's what I really, that's one of the, the biggest breakthroughs. We need to demonstrate this to our people, to our families, to your spouse, to your team, to the important people to you, and to yourself that you still have what it takes, that you are still capable, that you are still worthy, and that you are still a real freaking man. Because guess what? Most men, these days especially, are not real men. Most people, most men are full of shit. Most don't have what the fuck it takes. They think they do. They say they do. They post on the internet and social media that they do and that they have what it takes. But guess what? They fucking don't. People, for the most part, just talk shit. And don't back any up. Don't do any of it. They're fakes. They're frauds. They're phonies. They're bullshitters. That's the majority of men out there. And that's why men have gotten so soft and so weak because the majority of them have gone the route of just being comfortable, being average, being mediocre, and then bullshitting about it and having the world think that they're this some freaking monster and savage and all this other stuff when really when it comes down to the real world in the trenches, they're little fucking Pee Wee Herman, little coward motherfuckers. Then, as I, I thought about that, that most people are full of shit, that the internet is fake. I realized this challenge. We we it's great to invite other people over. It's great to have fundraisers and charities. But things like this, this suffering that we're talking about, this darkness, this different realm. This shit is for us. Us, meaning your small circle of people, your family and close people really that are part of your extended family and friends and kids. That's who this is about. That's who this is for. Yeah, all the rest is great, but that all turns into a distraction. Yeah, it's great to invite other people uh, 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 to join you and do things like this, but you need to go dark. You need to go internal. You need to go to this dark place to get that development. Not many, men, not many are meant or capable or willing to go along for that ride. This is about taking care of your own, leading your own, taking care of your fucking self. When I say this is about us, that also means it's just about you, like as in myself, in a selfish way. Like it's time to check out, check everything out and blank everything out and go to fucking war with myself and win that war with myself and my own fucking darkness and my own fucking demons. Taking care of your own, leading your own, taking care of yourself, earning the right to take care of these other people. And then that, that leads me into our family and our people, the people who actually participate in this thing for the whole, for the long run. I realize that we, us Eckert freaks and the freaks that are in our close circle, that we are so fucking far ahead of the average humans in so many different areas, physically and mentally and emotionally, most cannot fucking hang. This just shows us where we are at and what we are truly capable of and what the fuck we're made of and who the fuck we really are. Like this level of discipline and energy and confidence and action and being our freak selves, this level of effort and attitude, this level of commitment to excellence, this courage and patience that we demonstrate and stubbornness and just mental freaking toughness that we demonstrate. You know what it does? We, you know what we've grown? Our freak family has grown so accustomed to this that it's become normal part of our everyday life that until we really dig deep and internal and think about this way and reflect on this and, and have a, a review like this, we don't even realize how fucking awesome we are, how amazing this shit is that we, that we do, how unhuman and uncommon this shit is that we, th that we do, how awesome that we really are. That's why I tell people all the time, and I say it. I tell myself that. 
I am fucking awesome. I tell other people, you are fucking awesome. I tell the kids, you are fucking awesome. One time when uh, Tyson was building this Lego thing, it was a Marvel like superhero spaceship thing. It was like 3,400 something pieces for like ages 16 years and up. And he took him like a week to complete it. He did 99% of it it on his own. I helped him with a couple little parts here and there. And we're done. I was like, damn, Tyson. He was like five years old. Like you did this whole spaceship thing. 3,400 something pieces for made for 16 and up and you did it by yourself like you're freaking awesome Tyson it's like thanks daddy who who taught you how to do Legos I'm like no one you did you're teaching me how to do Legos no one taught me how to do Legos like you're fucking awesome he said thanks daddy who whoever told you you were awesome like no one and he said you're freaking awesome daddy and ever since that day I tell myself all the time I am fucking awesome or I tell other people you are fucking awesome when they deserve it when I mean it, when they fucking earned it, not just as a, a participation trophy. And I realized that we, we've grown accustomed to doing such hard shit and crazy shit that we finished this 24-hour challenge was like impossible and hitting impossible numbers. And we don't realize how freaking awesome it was, how out of the fucking world it is, how impossible. We're taking the impossible and we're dominating. We're making the impossible our bitch, which means... We need the next lesson I had is that we need to constantly create a new hard. Meaning, if what you're used to, what used to be hard for you is now your normal or easy or an everyday task or a habit or a daily discipline that you're used to now, that is no longer hard. Make your previous hard the new normal, the new beginning, the new standard, and create a new hard, a new impossible, a new enemy to go to fucking war with, a new war to engage in. A new adventure to go on and take your people along for the ride. Like if working out used to be hard for you or meditation used to be hard for you or cold showers or ice baths or long bike rides used to be hard for you and all those things have been for us at some point. If they're not hard anymore, they are no longer your mental toughness training. They're no longer serving you. Yes, they are maintaining you, maybe making you a little bit better as you're pushing them and progressing them, but they're no longer potential for real growth and development from that darkness that we're talking about. So don't lie to yourself and convince yourself that that the sh- your shit is hard that you're doing. If you've already mastered and overcome that demon, that shit ain't hard anymore. It's time to find a new hard. And as you find that new hard, it's the importance of, of in usually find that new hard is creating these memorable experiences. Shit your family, and you will remember for the rest of your lives. Like We will remember these 24-hour challenges forever. What we were feeling, probably what we were wearing, what music was playing on the radio, how we broke down our sets, what were our joints feeling like, what was going through our head, what were the demons we had to fight, what were the thoughts we had, what were the conversations we had. Like Create memorable experience on a regular basis, and usually doing hard shit and suffering together are some of the biggest memories you can remember during the project and during different different coaching programs we have or sometimes i'll be on stage speaking to a a group and i'll ask them what is the the proudest moment of your life besides anything not family related meaning not having kids or getting married because that's always the generic answer besides those what's the most the thing you're proud of the most in your life and 99 percent of the time it's never a big business deal or earning a ton of money or even buying a house, it's 99% of the time is some hard shit that they did, that they accomplished, that they finished. Some hard task, a marathon or whatever it, whatever it is. Some crazy ass hike, bodybuilding competition, whatever, a, a jujitsu tournament. Some hard shit is usually the thing that they're the most proud of. Because you know what? Most people as unfortunate and fucking sad as it is, most people will die never knowing if they have what it takes and never continuing to find out throughout their life if they still have what it takes. And that's why I still do this at my age and doing it with the kids. They, they need to start. They want to start proving themselves as little beasts, little savages. I need to continue, continue to prove that I still have have what it takes because people die never knowing their potential, never finding out what, the, what, the, what they're truly capable of 
or ever even knowing who the fuck they really are. Like, what a shame that some people go on their deathbeds never even knowing what they are truly capable of, what their potential was, what they could have been, or even who they are and what they're made of. That is a damn shame. And those are the final thoughts I want you to to really sink in, is to create new hard, create memorable experiences, and don't freaking die never knowing if you have what it takes or never finding out what you're really capable of, never pushing those boundaries of what's freaking possible, turning the impossible to done. And then from there, just keep asking yourself, what other challenges can I take on? What is next? What is next, motherfucker? Then put it down on the calendar. Plan it. You need to be planning hard shit all the time. You need to be doing voluntary suffering, manufacturing adversity, diving headfirst into hardship and suffering and pain on a regular basis. You can have constant and never-ending growth because that is the fastest way to real personal development and real personal growth is by doing hard shit like this 24-hour challenge we did. And these are just these are just the lessons off the top of my head as I continue writing and journaling. I have pages and pages more of shit, but these are the main ones I want to stick with you now. I'll probably do another episode on some of these other topics down the line, but these are the main points I wanted to stick through today to help you not become the one that goes to their deathbed not finding out who they are and what they're capable of. If any of this stuff resonates with you, digs in and sinks in and you can feel it, make sure that you share this with someone who needs to see this video, needs to hear this type of stuff. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave comments down below. What are some? What is the thing you're most proud of in your life? What was the hardest thing you've ever done? And then I also want to hear in the comments, what is your new hard going to be? The new challenge, the new war, the new battle you're going to go and embark on. Put that down in the comments. Let me know. And in case no one told you yet today, You are fucking awesome. No excuses.